it seems to me that as the Muslim community defines itself in the 21st century and moves forward, the challenge really will be how to harness those resources. Now, I can say that and you can sit there and say we're going to do it. Let me tell you, I travel this country all the time and I talk to Muslim communities and I meet Muslims who really want to see that change and that difference take place and have a commitment. But it's one thing to want to do it, it's another thing to have the vision to do it and to know how to do it. And what Muslims need to do is to develop critical masses of Muslims who are trained to have an impact in different areas that are important to the Muslim community. And for those critical masses to actually create a vision and then do something about it. And I'll end with my famous comment, which gets me into trouble, but also which some people like. And that is that the problem that many in the Muslim community have had in the last decade is what I call the couch potato syndrome. We developed this phrase of the couch potato, people who sit and watch sports but don't engage in it. So they sit there and get heavier and heavier as they watch football and say, my God, I love sports, you know? And, and they're sweating as they watch it, getting excited. And when they're all done, they're, and they're sitting there, have you ever noticed how Americans go out and they buy these incredible uh, athletic outfits? I mean, I have some of my students come in. There isn't a drop of sweat or dirt on it, you know? And they have, you know, $200 shoes and these great outfits. And then you sit and you watch the sports, and you know, but you're out of shape and you're watching. Well, the Muslim couch potato is the following. Because I speak to groups, I also do a lot of talks for Muslim fundraisers, and watch, in which I'm doing the, the talk, the non-Muslim. This is what it is. We get together and we talk about the problem of Islam globally. And we talk about Palestine. We talk about Kashmir. We talk about Bosnia. We talk about American neo-colonialism. We talk about the American double standard. We talk about Muslim bashing. And we are upset. And the Muslim community is going to change this. And it needs to change it. And then we break for dinner. And we have a wonderful dinner. It may be <laughs> Iranian, whatever, you know. And then everybody knows if you make it to dinner, huh? What happens? After dinner, you leave within 10 minutes. After dinner, we all go away saying, we feel good. We identified the problems. We showed that we know what they are. And we can really get upset about them. The more upset you get is the more sincere you are. You know? But remember, what the couch potato can't do, and most of you can't do if you don't move, the men, you can't reach for your wallet. You can't go for the wallet, take out of the wallet what you need to support in order to develop the institutions and do the institution building. And that becomes the critical question. Or you say things like, and I and a number of my colleagues get it all the time. You get emails and letters, dear Professor Esposito, thank you for speaking out in the media. Thank you for writing that op-ed piece. You really need to do more. <laughs> dear Professor Esposito, thank you for creating this, this center in Washington, which has such and such an impact, and you're all over the world. I wish you would create a few more positions for Muslim scholars and get the funding for them. And I say, ah, I should go out to Christians and say, I need another chair in Islamic studies. Christians come up with the money because the Muslims, they really want it, but somehow they can't get to it. You know? The challenge of the community then is to develop the vision, you've got the resources, and to support that vision. I often say this with regard to communities in Washington. There are some good Muslim groups that are doing terrific work. 